Shane is an award-winning journalist, a best-selling author, and a gifted, gifted storyteller. Shane has a perspective on life, business, and success different from anyone that I've ever met. With that, welcome Shane Snow to the stage. This is not just about business. This is about life. This is about our families, our communities, and no one ever changed those things for the better by doing more of the same thing. There's that famous quote by Einstein that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting things to change. It turns out it comes from an Alcoholics Anonymous pamphlet in 1981, not from Einstein, which I think is even more appropriate. But it's true, we're not gonna make progress if we do things the same way. At the same time, a word of warning, no one ever changed the world by cutting corners. That's how buildings fall down. That's how we almost destroy the world economy, right? By cutting corners. That's not what this is about. No one ever made a breakthrough without breaking the mold. And how we do that is together. So I think we should break it. Lateral thinking is this concept that uh, is about problem solving. And typically, we as logical humans, we tend to attack problems straightforward. And we, we approach problems the way that they're framed. So I framed the question, there are three people you can help. You have one seat, what do you do? Lateral thinking is about stepping outside of that question and questioning the question itself. Rethinking the assumptions or the conventions upon which the question is based so that you can arrive at a more elegant solution. This is the kind of thinking that computer programmers and computer hackers and MacGyver tend to use to find creative ways to approach problems. This is the Trojan horse. This is instead of attacking the castle walls, digging a hole underneath the castle. So it's kind of like you can chart out the potential energy that a group has. Sort of like how you can chart the tension on a rubber band. As you stretch a rubber band, you get more potential energy. But everyone's afraid of the part where the rubber band snaps. But if we can stay inside of this zone of ideal tension, that's where the magic happens. If you visualize every problem that we face in our work or in the world as a mountain range, and the mountain range represents all the potential solutions that we could find for this problem. Essentially, we in our work are hiking through this mountain range in the fog, and we're trying to find the best peak, the best solution to the problem, and, and we're working together to do it. And what happens when we have smart people together working on something, and smart leaders leading the way, is we often find a really great point in the mountain range. We find a great peak, and we, we decide that this is it. This is working. We've captured the market share. We're beating the competitors. We're seeing further than anyone else. This is it. And by the way, if we were to hike further in this mountain range, we're going downhill. But what happens is this peak eventually turns into a plateau. Other people are hiking this mountain range too. They're seeing things that we can't. And so we're in this sort of dilemma of how do we find a better peak? Is there a better peak out there? Are there better solutions to these problems? And how do we think of them if we're not trained to think that way? And this is where it helps to bring in another perspective. So this idea of perspective becomes really important because a lot of times we already have teams that have lots of different heuristics, people who went to train in different methodologies or different things, but we tend to inculcate groups, teams with cultures that see things the same way. And it turns out that that can cause us to have some success, but make it so that we can't quite get further than the smartest person in the team. Customers today, because they have so much more information at their fingertips, because they can do so much more research than before, they do it. And they want to do business with companies they feel like they know. They want to do business with companies that care about the same things that they care about. All things being equal, they'll choose the company that they feel more comfortable with. So this idea of cognitive friction is actually really key to a team doing well. It's not about getting along with a group of people who see things the same or even who see things differently. It's about not getting along well. That's the difference between a team that has potential and a team that harnesses its potential. We need to foster environments where our teams and our employees can ask the questions that are scary. They can say, what if we did things differently? What if we did things unconventionally? What if we took a step sideways? So these three things are part of the equation that, that I hope you remember about dream teams, thinking differently, engaging in the friction, leaning into that, sort of encouraging that, and then having the openness and humility to change. And it basically boils down to this idea that the teammate that helps you break through may not be who you expect and usually isn't who you expect. It's not the person who reminds you of you when you were younger. It's not the person who fits your culture or has your same ideas. It's the person who could push you into that zone and it's the ability to change because of that. I'm super excited about it because I think that this message that the era of the lone innovator, the lone smart person, the lone team leader who bravely and intelligently changes the world, that's over. 
Even Elon Musk couldn't do it without all of that support, without all of those brilliant people providing the resources and making the innovation to make it happen. And that's how it's gonna happen for us. And so for us as leaders, we need to change that mindset to the we mindset. The moral of this story is that we need each other. But thank you very much.